Hello and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah. I'm Nancy. And I'm Rick. And today we are going to do a blind tasting of the mead we made last year. Mm -hmm. So back in October we brewed a mead and then we also uh, made a melon mel. Uh, this melon mel is any fruit um, mead or fruit honey fermented beverage. Mm -hmm. And Nancy and Sarah here uh, harvested elderberries. And, and then Nancy made a juice or a slurry that was cooked down and we added that to our mead. So we're going to blind taste test these. We have not tried these yet. And we're going to start with the mead, which is made from a neighbor's honey. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this is just honey and yeast. Is that right? Yes. Cheers. I'm going to do a little in here to show that it's very light in color. It almost looks like champagne to me. The smell in this room is amazing as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful nose. You can definitely smell the alcohol. Mm. Smooth. Mm -hmm. mm. It's not overpoweringly alcoholic when you taste it though. No, but it's very sharp on the nose, uh, but not uh, not gasoline or anything like that, mm -hmm. which I've distinctive, had. Yeah. distinctive, yeah. You know, this is lovely, and the carbonation was done with just a little bit of maple sugar. I think we used the maple syrup, um, just to do a little bit of carbonation here, just to get a little bit of bubble, and it came out very well. We opened it off camera, but it made a nice distinctive. Oh <laughs> yeah, and you can tell how much carbonation it has. Yeah. Um, I would say it has a nice honey flavor too. Mm -hmm. Definitely has a distinctive. It does, flavor. and I have to say this is as good as any. <laughs> commercial mead that I've purchased in stores. Yes. <laughs> I'm in. Good right. job. I'll take that. Yeah. I think that's the local honey. When you yeah. say start with good ingredients and then get a good product. Yeah, I agree. There's honey and there's honey. Mm -hmm. And this says, uh, if you go back to the first video, this is actually made with very old honey that we found in the basement that was from a local um, friend who raises these. Found in the basement. We knew it was down there. We were just cleaning up. So. Yeah, we just forgot about it after 10 years and it still made a very excellent meat. Mm -hmm. so, so local honey is always going to be the best and best for you as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm, that really Quite tasty. Okay. Mm. All right. So next. Oh, I forgot to show off the, the bottles. So oh, that's right. So Rick's been making labels. We do have a separate... Um, it's not a video, but there's a blog post on making the labels, which we have on the website, gayshowcrafts.com, so you can check out Rick's quick tutorial on making your own labels without glue. And uh, that one is named Breath of Awen, and that is a name that Nancy came up with. Mm -hmm. Next is going to be our Elderberry Melamel. Mm -hmm. So this is any honey mead made with any fruit. Right? It's a so as far as I understand it, yes. Mm -hmm. So, Nancy, tell us a little bit about the elderberry. Well, elderberry has a number of medicinal uses, um, some of which have been fairly well researched and clinically tested, so mm -hmm. it's not just you know, woo-woo, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> old old uh, ancient wives' tales or something. Right. Yeah. Uh, and the most common ones that people use elderberry to treat are viral infections. So that would include colds, influenza, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. H1N1 or so-called swine flu. Mm -hmm. And that has been clinically tested. The recommendation is that you start taking elderberry syrup as soon as you start to get sy symptoms. Mm -hmm. and, and it can reduce the amount of time that you're sick and the intensity. Right, it can prevent getting sick or significantly reduce the recovery time. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Nancy has been nice enough to also make some elderberry syrup for us, which we were taking throughout the winter as a preventative. And mm -hmm. uh, we did pretty well. Yeah. In this case, we've got it added for our color. You see a beautiful pink. I'll hold up. And uh, the flavor. Let's taste it. Well, it's got a much funkier, stronger nose. It does. Slightly funky nose. Lovely flavor. Mm. I really like that. Oh, it's smoother and sweeter, I would say, than yeah. the honey, which surprises me. I agree. I agree. Mm. Um, mm. The, the golden one is very champagne-like, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one's much drier. a little more. 
Yeah, dry is a good way to put that. You're right. I, yeah, I, I think the, the plain meat is drier and this is a little... But it's sweet. It's sweet. It doesn't have any tang to it, which you might think. Yeah. I think it has a, a tang at the finish. It's lovely. Mm. It's really yeah. thin. That's quite wonderful. And the color of it is just spectacular. Mm -hmm. Blush. So in case you didn't see it before, Rick held up the label, but this one is called Perfervid Blush. Sorry, dear. <laughs> Perfervid Blush. And Perfervid means intense, yes. right? Again, we let Nancy name these because she's going to be getting a share of both beverages. Yeah, it took um, our entire minutes. family here to make these collections. Mm -hmm. and thank you, ladies, for yeah. your hard work. And our friend Sue. Thank you, Sue. Okay, yeah. Sue too. We went to her uh, her place last year and picked all the elderberries. So. And we have discovered that we might have our own elder tree in the front yard. Mm -hmm. And so tune in. We might find that we'll have more elderberries uh, with which to make mead or syrups or some mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Good. So, top tips for making your own mead. Don't worry about the age of your honey. Um, use the right kind of yeast. Correct. Right? And add some local flavor to it if you have any local fruits, extra fruits that you've picked at a U-Pick place or, mm -hmm. you know. I think That's the only thing like I that. would add to that, and my apologies, is to be patient. This mm, is something mm -hmm. we started in October, uh, so I think our first video was somewhere in October or early November, um, and then we talked about when we racked it, and that was on uh, New Year's Eve of 2018, right. and now we hear, we here we are just a, a couple of uh, days or, or about a week or so after solstice, mm -hmm. uh, trying it, and this is going to be lovely for a variety of different occasions coming up uh, over the summer and the fall mm -hmm. and the winter. Mm -hmm. Yep. And meat is a higher alcohol content than beer, so it can be a really nice winter warmer, even though I'm really enjoying it. It's very hot and sticky, in case you can't tell from our dewy complexions. Uh, it's pretty muggy today, so this is nice and refreshing, but it's also really nice uh, as a winter warmer. Agreed. So thanks for joining us uh, for along this journey of meat. And uh, if you do make a mead or a mellow mel, please let us know, either in the comments below or drop us an email at the GageHillCrafts.com website. Yep, definitely. And enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.